When I first decided to join and I was at the meet and greet, um, you know, again, when thinking about this, I have to think about militia. And so when speaking to my wife, you know, talking about, hey, this is what I'm thinking about doing, she, you know, she kind of takes a step back and thinks like, well, are you, are you, are you tripping or what? She's looking at militia from what you see. Unfortunately, it's groups that are being highlighted and targeted. Their actions bring the negative context to militia, and that's not how it's supposed to be. When I joined the militia, I didn't know what to completely expect. I had an idea because I knew someone who was already in it. I've been going around a few different patriot groups in the area looking for a place to fit in. I ended up at the California State Militia. It was the uh, best fit for me. What drew me to it was the, the training and professionalism with the, with the militia. You know, with my military background, kind of drew me in with that type of training and wanting to exercise the skills that they practice and they, they learn and teach. Filled in a gap that was missing since I got out of the Marine Corps without having to actually go back. When I did the meet and greet, I asked her shit little questions. And, uh, you know, questions were answered in here, you know, so I've been enjoying it ever since. My first experience rolling up here, felt like I was walking onto a military base. Everybody was, you know, in line, you know, in uniform, and everybody knew what was going on and doing their own separate tasks, and it wasn't just a bunch of guys standing around. We do get people who come in here and they're just, they're not quite fit for this. It's not what they expected. They thought we were uh, another perspective of what militias are. They thought we were just a bunch of people just, you know, Rah, 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 Republican, blah, blah, blah. Let's shoot some beer cans and fucking get drunk with our buddies. We're not that either. We're professional. You know, the structure, the organization, immediately I was like, this is what I'm looking for. This is what I need. You know, talking with everybody. Everybody's from different walks of life, different places, different economic backgrounds. And it's amazing to see so many different people come together for a common cause and work together pretty flawlessly. Here in the California State Militia, we are not a private army, nor are we paramilitary. Uh, the law defines paramilitary as those who practice and train in sabotage, guerrilla warfare, starting riots, or disrupting the school system. We do not do that, we don't train that, we don't intend to do that. What we are is a militia in the traditional sense of the Second Amendment. We are well regulated, we are composed of the citizenry. Again, when you look at the Second Amendment, right, well-rounded, uh, regulated uh, group of individuals. And so that's what I believe this group is really trying to push and always stay the emphasis on. If they chose to do stupid-ass actions that could put other people in jeopardy for the sake of, you know, whatever type of personal values, I would have been gone a long time ago. They portray us in a, in a negative light. So some people who don't go out there and learn for themselves or do their homework or either care to figure out who we are, they have that perspective already instilled in them, so they, they push that on us when that's not what we're about. In, in the 2nd Regiment, we hold up honor, legality, and courage above all. The militia is apolitical. Our only concern is tyranny and insurrection within our state. We don't uh, uphold any form of government other than in its traditional sense. Sure, as individuals, we all have our own you know, personal opinions, but as an organization, as a group, uh, we have no political standings. Um, you know, it was even mentioned the other day that a new recruit came in. He's like, you know, no one asked me what if I was a Democrat or a Republican. I'm like, no, because we're apolitical. Like, that's that's just when they published a recent story about militia, they were showing all the fucking crazy ones. I wish they would highlight the good. And I think that's what a lot of people need to see is they need to see the good. They need to see like, hey, you know what? It wasn't just a guy that owns a big five ton truck going through muddy water. No, dude, it was a militia group that banded together to go and help this. You know, it's it's okay to say the word militia in, in good connotations. Right? I think that's what it's, it's really important to, uh, to highlight. I've been called a white supremacist because I was a part of the militia. Like straight up told, got called a Nazi and a white supremacist. And I'm looking at myself and I'm like, I'm Mexican. There was never a sense of racism. Again, the negative connotations that people put on militias doesn't happen here. It's, it's simple to say, it doesn't happen here. Or if it has shit, do they, they really do a good job in hiding it? Because I haven't seen a damn thing. 
The only color we see is what you see in the multicam. We don't, we don't care if you're black, brown, white, purple, pink, green, whatever, as long as you can carry your weight and do your job that's assigned to you, um, you're more than welcome in our ranks. There's a lot of people from different backgrounds, different ethnicities, and we all come together as brothers and sisters. I'd rather be here protecting and helping my community and my home of California, because I'm born and raised in California, than off in some country where people hate us because we're there for possibly the wrong reasons. I believe there are misconceptions about what a well-regulated militia is. You can get any two people together around the the nation and call yourself a militia, but are you effective? Are you actually an organization that represents your community? I believe that the 2nd Regiment of California State Militia does that, and we do it effectively because of our uh, level of recruiting, our level of logistics, and uh, our training tempo, and uh, what our main mission is in support of life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness of our citizenry. We're not looking for Rambos, we're not looking for Delta Navy SEAL door gunners. We do a background check. Only people of high moral standards and no felonies, nothing like that, have to be legal in the state of California to own a firearm. We check boxes to make sure that they're the type of people that would fit in. We don't want people that want to go out, oh, I, I love to shoot, so I want to come shoot guns. Well, that's not what we're about. But if someone comes in and they're like that, they're out. They're out. We don't need none of that. We don't, we don't need that. We don't want that. Thanks for trying to join up. Thanks for wanting to be a part of us. You're not a good fit. So in addition to uh, the military style type training we do, which is all defensive by the way, we don't train on any tactics that could be considered aggressive or offensive. We do a lot of survival training, a lot of focus on medical. Our goal is to help our community in mostly disaster and crisis situations. I am a nurse, so I have also helped with some of the medical training, but I've also learned some too because we have paramedics here who have done more on scene emergency stuff because I was an ICU nurse and now I do a surgical services. It's, it's well organized, you get some awesome training. Also train in first aid, land navigation, search and rescue. This weekend we're at an FTX where we're learning how to repel, how to retrieve someone, how to evacuate someone on a rope through a steep, rugged terrain. We all see the same thing the same way. So, uh, it's, and when we're out in those conditions, those austere conditions, we take care of each other. If someone needs socks, we loan them your socks. Our company is probably the most organized, you know, militia, you know, throughout the nation. A lot of the stuff we learn, uh, we could uh, apply in the real world situations. Like we have an Operation Poseidon where we learn how to travel in teams on boats. Thank you.
want to be effective in our community. We are ready, willing, and able to serve in, in times of natural disasters, man-made disasters, whatever may come up. We want to have uh, many assets that we can offer to our community and assist our first responders if, if needed. For instance, this past winter, uh, there was a, a flood disaster in, in Central California and we heard word that they needed volunteers. 26 members dropped everything they were doing within an hour. We're down there with our five-ton trucks and John boats rescuing citizens. We have high water vehicles. They didn't have the resources there. It took the National Guard three days to get down there, but we were there within hours, literally. Rescue teams spent the day on rafts, reaching people who were stuck in cars and homes. City, county, state, and national authorities are pitching in to help. Using our training and our logistics and our organizational skills. And we were able to use that training that we learned here to help people out in our community. It's a choice. We can choose to go out there and help the community. We can choose to, to feed the people that just lost their home in a fire or get the people out. All the expense for that food, all the gas and everything else comes out of our members' pockets. We don't charge dues. Everybody here contributes what they can when they can. Just a couple of weeks ago, uh, this summer, we had our bad uh, wildfires up here. Uh, we had actually set up a base. The word went out that they needed community assistance, that there was people that were homeless and left homeless. Their properties burned down. They couldn't get up to their properties or whatever. Uh, so we took our, our mobile chow hall up there and, and served breakfast, lunch, and dinner to anybody that wanted it for free. Feed people that were coming out of the evacuation areas. Uh, some of us actually went in and helped fight fires because they're our neighbors. It's not every day somebody's gonna go and volunteer to go and trek through mud and sludge or whatever just to go and rescue individuals. It, people won't do that. It's not, it's, you know, it's, you know, out of sight, out of mind mentality. And so it's a lot of these guys, I think they realize that there's something that's, uh, that's higher than them. Right, it's a, it's a different type of a calling. And so that's what this militia group uh, tends to bring to the table.